Okay, here we are. This is Ben's description, very high level overview of how the vault is actually the, the hub or the center of good data management in Altium Designer 10. So really, where does all this start? It usually starts with components. So you might have some schematic symbols and, and things like that. It's basically a schematic library. You can't do a design without a schematic library and some parts in the library. And then along with that, there's going to be footprints in a PCB lib. And then we have the engineering data, that parametric information about tolerances, about operating temperatures, some of the important things that really only engineers can fully understand. And these, at, at the heart of the system, as I mentioned, is the vault or enterprise vault server. These things are all released into the vault and become a symbol in, this in the case of a schematic library part that'll become a symbol typically footprint will become a footprint object or a PCB library uh, part and then those are essentially uh, items which have a revision. So as you change a schematic library component and update it, you'll re-release it into, into new revisions of its symbol item in the vault. And same with footprints. And then those are combined uh, logically with the parametric data to form components. And there's a whole other uh, science in the vault of managing components and managing part choices and links to manufacturer and supplier data and so on but I'm not going to talk about that in this little video. So on the one side here in, in my scenario or this situation and, and the vaults are, are highly flexible so this is just one way of doing it but I would have this all stored in a component management zone or CMZ I'll call that. Now on the design side, if you want to use these things in a design, I'll open a new project in Altium Designer and in that project I'll have some schematics and they may there may be templates and other things involved in that which could also come from the vault and I'll have ultimately a PCB design with you know, tracks and mechanical models and so on. And to use these, uh, these objects, these are placed, these components are placed from the vault into my design. And so I can build my whole design this way. And ultimately, uh, when I'm doing proper data management, my design documents and the project are also uh, held within. I'll use a different pen now because that one's wearing out. They're held within a design repository, which is typically a subversion or CVS um, version control system. And so these are version control documents. I have traceability. I can, uh, I can compare different revisions. We can do a collaborative PCB design because it's held in the repository and so on. There's a number of advantages to doing that. And when the time comes uh, that I'm ready to, to do some production work with my design, I'm going to release that design. So those documents Uh, get get released through the PCB project configuration manager and we do that through the um, release view 
and those ultimately get released into items in my production release zone part of my vault, which is going to be these zones are top level folders in the vault typically. So when I release the files for producing a board, those go into an item in the vault. And that has a revision and, and a, uh, the item name suffixed with a revision, depending on your revision naming scheme that you've set up. Once those are released, uh, I could release multiple different configurations. So I may have one item set aside for, uh, for PCB fabrication, and then I may have another one for assembly and so on. And so this is why the configuration manager can take the original source documents of the same revision, uh, the same snapshot in time, if you will, and generate these different configurations, which may be for production, maybe for documentation, maybe for even for different variants. And those documents, along with the outputs generated, um, for example, the Gerbers, o ODB++, bills of materials, etc., are released into those items. Once those are released, a link is established because the component symbols in, or the components you place in the schematics in this design retain a link back to their original item in the vault. So we now have this relationship between these released designs or, or these um, production releases and the components in the vault that were used to, to design those documents. And that gives us where used capability. So that where used capability appears uh, with a link from items in the vault to other items in the vault after you've done the full design and release cycle. We can also have a design content management zone, or DCMZ as I would call it, and you can take an existing schematic sheet and release that sheet itself into an item in the DCMZ. Now this would be the case where you've actually built this design, uh, you know that that circuit works and you are likely to want to reuse it in other designs. So you want to create a design reuse element out of that, which would be a, in this case a device sheet and you can release that whole schematic into the design content management zone if you, if you want to there and that creates an item for that device sheet, which is kind of like a component in that you can now place that in other designs. But that also then maintains a where used link back to the uh, um, components in the component management zone. So from the component management zone, when you're looking at a different component, at different components in the vault, you can go to the where used tab and you can see the links to all these other items that have used those parts and you can click on those and browse straight to them. So that's really cool. Now, what happens once these items are released for production? At this point, you use the publishing. You publish them. And there's a number of different places you can publish to. In the cloud, we have Amazon S3 or box.net. You can release uh, to a folder in a file system, or you can even release to a folder using FTP if you want to upload to a website. So publishing can we can take the fabrication or production outputs or even the design files, whatever we need from these items we can publish. And then from, from there we can send that or provide access to that data to our EMS providers or fabrication houses or even our internal 
ERP um, um, MRP personnel. And then information from particularly from purchasing or ERP MRP can also link back to our parametric data of the parts at the beginning of the, of the system. So we can have supplier links and part choices in here for, for the engineers to be able to make intelligent choices about which components they use in a design. And even then, to some extent, because of those decisions, that they can influence the design itself. And that some of that information may be stocking, inventory, pricing, availability, and some of that could even come from our ERP or MRP. So that's the very high level overview of the, of the vault as the centre of the system, incorporating component management, production release and document or content management.